So now in this video, we want to change the user role and I want to have a drop down menu where you can select on it and choose a role. And based on that, we will change the role of the user. And because it's going to have a lot of code, I will create a different component for this one. So in our resources folder and then JS and then components, I will create a new document and I will call it role select. Now let's have our script tag here and the template. And for now, I just want to say role. Then let's go back to the admin dashboard and import our component. So let's say role select in the script tag. And then on this table data where we show the user role, we want to use that component like this and self close it. And back to the website, we can see that text. So now we want to work in this component. And let's start with the markup. So on the first div, I want to add flex item center and gap two. Then we will have a form here and we can delete the action and then add some classes on the form itself. Again, flex item center and gap two. And within that form, we will have a select input field. So we don't need names or ID, but let's add a name for now. And you can have a label if you want. So I'm going to add a label, but I would add the class SR only. So this class will hide this element and it will be only visible for the screen readers. But if you want to show it, just remove this class. And I just want to say roles like this. All right. So on the select element, I'm going to add some classes. So text to slate 800, background slate 200 and text extra small, padding Y1, border 0, outline 0, just to override the default classes and then around it lg or large now within this select element we will have our options using the option element the value of this first one is going to be admin and the text that the user would see is just admin then i can copy this paste it two more times for other roles for example general as well as the value and suspend it so if we take a look at our drop down menu this is what we have and i can select a user role and we want to listen to this input and perform an action whenever these changes so let's just start by creating our form instance so in the script tag i can say const form and we will set this to use form from inertia view and in here we will just have a role variable which i will set it to an empty string at first but we want to set this to the current user's role but again we will come back to it then let's create our submit function down here and when we select an option, we want to perform an action. So I'm going to use an if else statement and use the confirm function and show a message. But I want to make my message dynamic. So I will use backticks and say change this user's role to whatever role the user selects. So I can say form.role in curly brackets as a dynamic value. And at the end, I will also add a question mark. So if that's true, we will do something. But if it is not true, we will do something else. So now that's our function for now. And we want to attach this to the form, but we don't want to use the submit event listener. We want to use the change listener and then use our function. So whenever there is a change on the form, we will call this function. Then we also want to use this form on our select input field and attach it using the V model so we can get the data out of it. So on the select element, I can use the V model and attach this to form.role. So this is our select, this is our form, we are listening to the changes and we are using the submit function up here. If we go back to our website and give it a reload, you notice all the roles are set to an empty string because that's what we specified up here. But if I select a role here, in the pop-up, we can see change this user's role to general because that's what I selected. If I select suspended, then we will see suspended up here. So we know we can get the data out of those options and we just have to actually select a user role. So let's accept a prop here and I will create a props variable, set it to define props macro. And we want to say that we are expecting a user of type object. Then for this role property, instead of setting it to an empty string, we want to use our current user role. So we can say props user role, and then we want to go back to our admin dashboard and pass the prop to this component. Right here, we have our user select component. We want to bind the user prop to the user we have up here, and we are looping over that. 
So now if we go back to our website, you can see we have the current users roles. And if I select anything, we will see it in the pop-up. And if we press OK, we want to submit this to a route to actually change the value in our database. But notice if I press cancel, the role changes to suspended. And if I reload, it is back to general. So even though I say cancel, it is still selecting the new value and we will fix this in the, our function. All right, so back to the role select component. We want to change the user role if this confirm returns true, but if it's canceled, we will set the form role to the previous value. So that was from props user role. So this way, if we go back to the website, and I will change this one to suspend it and press cancel, then it goes back to general. Now the next step is to actually create a route and a function in our controller so we can submit this request and handle it in our backend application. So let's leave this open and open our web.php. We have our admin group right here. We want to create a new route. So this route is going to be a put or patch route. I will use put. And for the URI, I would use admin forward slash the user ID. So I'm passing a dynamic value here or a parameter and then a role. I would also have a function in my controller, which I would call it role. And I would name this admin dot role. So this is our put route, which is going to be in charge of changing a user role. Now let's create this role function in our admin controller. So right after index, I can say public function role, and we want to accept the request since we are grabbing a value from our form. And in here, we want to update a user. So we want to accept the user as a parameter as well. So request and user. And let's die and dump the user and the request. So we can pass an array here if we have two values and say request and user. So now we have a function, we have a route, and we just want to submit our form, which is this one, to that route. So in this if block, we can use the form instance and pass the HTTP method, which is put for us. Then we want to use the route function, pass down the name of the route, which for me is admin role. And as a second argument, we want to pass down the user ID. So we can say props user dot ID. So let's see if this works back to our website. We have this admin user. If I change the role to general and press OK, we have our array. The first one is the request. And if we take a look at parameters, you notice the role is set to the new value. So this is what we want to use. Also, if we take a look at the second element, which is our user under attributes, we have the information about the selected user. So this is what we need in our controller to handle this request. So back to the controller and to the role function, we just want to grab this user and update the role property for this particular user. So inside the update method, we can pass an array and grab the property we want to change, which is role in this case. And the value of this is going to be request role. So whatever is the new value is going to be the role of that user. And that's all we have to do. We could also return a redirect to the same route so we can say, go back to admin index and let's add a with method with a status key. So we will have a message. Now, again, I want to make this message dynamic instead of just some random text. So instead of single quotes, I will use double quotations and I will say user role changed to request role and the text successfully. Again, let me put these on new lines and we can also wrap this with curly brackets. Just to be clear, this is a dynamic value. Now, this is all we have to do in terms of changing a user role, but this is not going to work. And you can also validate the request before updating the role. It's quite easy. You can just use the validate function and say if the role, for example, is a string and required. Now let's go back to the website and if I change this role to general and press OK, you notice it is changed here, but if I reload, it is going back to the admin. So it is not updating in our database, but we also don't see any error messages. Now, before going back and fixing the problem, let's just bring in our session messages first. So we are going back to the admin index page with this status message, right? Which is this page. So we can send that status message as a prop to our component using the session function and the status key. 
Then we can open admin dashboard and duplicate one of these import lines, bring in our session messages component, then accept a status as a prop, which is going to be type string. And then somewhere on the site, maybe under this head tag, I will use our session messages and bind the status attribute or prop to the value we have up here. And let me delete this console.log as well. Okay, back to the website one more time. Let's change this one to general and press OK. You notice we actually get the session message that the user role was changed. But if we reload, it is not changed. So this is happening because in our user model, in the fillable array, we are not saying that the role property can be filled using a form. So this is important whenever you create a model and you're expecting to fill the values from a form or another source, you need to include that in your fillable array. Otherwise, it is not going to work. So right here in the fillable array, we can simply add the role and this will fix our problem and we can close the user model. So back to the website again, let's change this second user to suspended and press OK. We can see the session message. We can see the role here and if I reload, it stays suspended. And if we open our database, we have this user right here that is set to suspended. So it is working properly now and you can select any of these users and change their roles if you want to. So now we have two suspended users and if we reload, it stays the same. So this is in terms of our user roles and let's take a look at the dark mode too. And I think it looks okay. Now the next step in the next video, we will cover the heading. So we want to have a search field and also a filter. So for example, we just want to see the suspended users. So we will have a checkbox here to filter these users. All right, let's do that in the next video.